In the third section of the lecture on terrain modeling, we will talk about point cloud data analysis that you will be doing for your assignment. So what is binning? Binning is a fast method that allows us to analyze point clouds and to generate rapidly digital elevation models using per cell processing. So what does this mean? This means that we are looking only at a single cell and we are computing elevation using the point cloud data that are located within this cell and we are doing it one cell at a time. So to apply this approach we need to have at least one point for each grid cell and we can perform different types of analysis. Uh, for example, we can compute the number of points per each cell that essentially allows us to quantify the point cloud density. Then we can also compute the range of elevations uh, of the points that are located within each cell and also the mean and standard deviation. Now the mean value of elevation uh, computed from the points located within each cell is one pretty effective way how to compute a digital elevation model from point cloud. You can also compute or find a minimum elevation value within the cell, maximum elevation value, for example, when you are looking uh, for a canopy, or you can assign the grid cell the elevation value based on the nearest point um, that is located within this grid cell. And this approach is sufficient for many applications, especially with the latest data that have such a high point density as we have already shown. Uh, and uh, uh, with this approach, you don't even need to import the points into the GIS, you can do on-fly raster generation, but the result can be noisy and it can include no data spots that you will have to fill in. So this is how our multiple return point cloud would look like with these yellow points, our first returns, and the brown points are second, third, or fourth returns. And you can see that some of these brown points are above surface, such as this one or this one. And some of these brown points have reached the bare ground. And those are used to represent the bare ground under the canopy of this forest. And in the area where we don't have any forest, which is just open field, you can see that we have only a single return, and that's the first return. And when you look at the, the location of, this, uh, uh, of these points in a uh, two-dimensional plane, you can see the, the green points are all returns, the red points are first returns, and you can see that the second returns are shifted a little bit compared to the first return. So they are not, their coordinates are not identical. And this is how the bare earth data would look like. In those areas where we have multiple return data, we are selecting only those points that have reached the ground. And you can see that there is plenty of empty spaces where we don't have any point that have reached the ground. So it will be this forest. And here you can again see the, the green points are all returns and the yellow points are bare earth points. So for example, in this location, which will be this location, we didn't have any return that would reach the ground. So uh, bare ground data in forested areas would have lower density than in open areas. Then another thing to notice is here we have a building and you can see there are only green points, all returns, but no bare earth 
data. In, for example, in NC flood mapping, bare earth points, you wouldn't have any points at all in those areas where there are buildings. And sometimes the buildings are pretty big, so you can get a pretty big area that doesn't have any points. And then another case would be ponds. So for example, here we have one pond. Here is another one, actually. And in these areas, but we don't have any first return data. And usually you can get some response from water, but it's much noisier and much less reliable than what you get from solid earth. And of course, with this variability in the point data density, it is good to map what the point density is for our data set. And especially if you are working, for example, with time series or with uh, uh, LiDAR data acquired by different technologies or by different surveys. So here is an example. The first image shows the number of bare earth points for each two meter resolution cell. And this image shows number of bare earth points per six meter resolution cell. And you can see yellow is zero. So most of the grid cells here don't really have uh, any point in it. So that means that our points are farther apart than two meters. And that's with the older data. So these data are from 2001. More recent data would have higher density unless they are uh, flown from uh, very high uh, altitude. And again, you can see that there are no points here uh, where we have buildings because those points have been removed because this is bare earth point data set. And then we have also uh, no point areas here where we have some ponds. Now, if we lower resolution to six meter, we have much greater variety of point density. And you can see there are still couple grid cells that don't have any points. And those are, as I mentioned, where we have the buildings. Also in this forest, there are certain areas where we didn't get any bare ground returns. But then in the open areas, we have some grid cells where we have as many as three or four points per each grid cell. Now, for this six meter resolution, we can then compute the range of bare earth elevations within grid cell. So when we compute the, the range, and that means the difference between the minimum and maximum elevation measured in each grid cell, you can see that we have a couple points where the the difference between minimum and maximum bare earth elevation is greater than half meter and it can be even greater than one meter. So let's look at where we have such points. And you can see they are here. Here we have big range within the grid cell, six meter grid cell. Here we have a couple of them. Here we have a couple of them and there are some here as well. And you can see when we display them over the, this three-dimensional model, you are starting to get a hint that, that this large range is associated with relatively steep slope, like the banks of this pond or the side of this road or this steeper slope here and steeper slope here. And you can indeed see that these large ranges are around the pond around the road and in some of these steeper, uh, steeper areas. That tells us that in these areas, we may be losing some information if we create a digital elevation model using six meter resolution. Moreover, when we use the mean or average uh, bare earth elevation per each cell, 
we will get some digital elevation model. But this digital elevation model for bare earth points still has quite a few holes in it. So what this tells us that even if we use 6 meter resolution, binning isn't really enough to create a digital elevation model from this particular data because the density of this data is relatively low compared to the current day uh, LIDARs. So what we need, we need to interpolate. And we will talk about it in our next lecture. And here are a couple more examples uh, from the processing of LIDAR point clouds. Here you have another point density, set of point density maps. This is again 2001. Uh, LIDAR from the NC flood mapping program, program bare earth points. And again, you can see that mo there are many grid cells here that don't have any, any points. Most of them have just one. There is uh, this small patch, small strip that may have two or three points per cell. But definitely not enough for binning at two meter resolution. And now for comparison, this is 2004 LIDAR survey. Now again, number of points per 2 meter resolution grid cell. And you can see that there are no empty cells and most of the cells have actually the number of points greater than 7, many of them greater than 10. So you can really use binning successfully to create a full continuous digital elevation model from these data. Now, this is how the range would look like for 2004 data. So at one foot resolution or 30 centimeter resolution, the range is practically zero because there is just one point per each grid cell and maybe not even one point per each grid cell. Now at one meter resolution, we have about one point, at least one point per each grid cell and the, the range of elevation is still very low except for this area where, we ca where it can go around 20, 30 centimeters. Now for five meter resolution, we are seeing much larger ranges on the order of 50 centimeters, so the range is already higher than the accuracy of LiDAR data, which is typically around 15 centimeters. And then at 10 meter resolution, the range within each 10 meter uh, grid cell can be as high as 3 meters. And that, that tells you that you are essentially starting to lose the features that are as high as three meters. And when you compare it with the actual digital elevation model, so you can see that you are essentially losing the edge of this dune. This is where we have these high ranges. So if you are going to do 10 meter resolution, you need to be aware that you will be losing a lot of information that is in the that is in the data in terms of morphology uh, or the shape or the geometry of topography in this area and here is another set that uh, uh, illustrating the binning versus interpolation issue so here are jockeys rich 1999 point, uh, point cloud data that are unfiltered so you can see if you really get the raw data there will be some points which are very very high really in the air those are usually filtered uh, now before the data are distributed but with this data set we had them in we had to filter them out ourselves and then this is the result of one meter grid cell binning using the maximum elevation. So you can see that doing one meter DEM just by binning doesn't really result in any useful digital elevation model in spite of the fact that we have pretty dense uh, digital elevation data. But if we reduce the resolution to three meters and we are using 
mean elevation for each grid cell, we get quite useful uh, digital elevation model that is, uh, that is uh, usable for many different applications. So 3 meter resolution is already a pretty good resolution. But if we really want to do 1 meter resolution DM, we need to interpolate. And you can see what a big difference that interpolation makes in terms of representation of the topographic features and the, uh, and the vegetation. So this is much, much sharper, much more detailed digital elevation model than our binned uh, digital elevation model. So if you are going really after a high level of detail, then you usually need to use interpolation. And we will talk about interpolation in our next lecture.